What's up guys, it's Blaze here. In the last tutorial video that we did, we created a room transition. Now we transitioned from the overworld to the combat room and back to the overworld. What I missed and I kind of glossed over it, um, actually I didn't cover it at all, but what we missed in that last video was actually what happens if we lose. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. Create room. <laughs> It was there the whole time. So uh, with this one, we're gonna cover things a little bit differently. We're going to use a room transition code that I outlined in the last video, which is room go to. And we're gonna use a number, but instead of a number, we're gonna do it slightly different. So with this new room, this will be our game over screen. I am going to call it RM game over. You can call it whatever you want, and it doesn't really matter where it is in the um, in the room order because we are going to use code to move directly to that screen. So now that that's been created, we're done for now. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of debug buttons because when we get into this room, what we wanna do is we want to reset the game. So there'll be a button right in the middle where the player can click and that will restart the game basically. So. Uh, let me just, so whenever I create a room for some reason, it opens up the inspector. Not sure if that's a GMS2 thing or what, um, but don't worry about that. So like I said, we're going to create a, a few debug buttons here. Now you might be wondering, could, couldn't we just put a generic button in? No, we can't. Although what we will be doing is our uh, parent button will be the parent of this debug button that we will create. So let's go ahead and let's create a an object, an object, object, there it is. And I will call it debug button. And basically all it's going to do is it's going to inherit the events of P button. And rather than all of this um, with the exception of step event, we are going to go ahead and we are going to override that. Now, we're not going to write code from the ground up. We are actually going to go over to P button if I have it open, which I don't. So if we go into P button here and we go into the step event, let me just go over to it. In the step event here, we have this line of code, right? We have this if statement check. In the game over screen, we do not have a C manager that checks for allow input. And that's the one thing that we need to change for our debug button, All right? So I want you guys to take your P button step event code, copy all of that. And in your debug button, you can right click and let me just delete this event so I can show you guys again. If you select each one of these events by right clicking, you can either open the parent event, which will take us to the original code. We can inherit from it, or we can override the event. Now, when we inherit the event, if we click this, we get this one line of code here. Now, basically what this is, it's going to take all of the code that we had in the original, in the parent, and then on top of that, we can do other things, like we can make other checks. For our case though, we don't want to inherit, we want to, override and basically override means that whatever you're going to write in this step event for us anyway in this step event we will do this code instead of the original code so keep that in mind uh, when you're creating parents and child objects that you can override parent code all right so let's paste that original code in and right here at line 10, if your format is the same as mine, we need to get rid of the cmanager.allowInput and end check, right? We need to get rid of all of that because if we keep that in and our button, we try with our button to click it, it will actually run an error because in our game over screen, there is no cmanager. And so we need to make sure that that line gets ignored. And this is one really quick way that we can do that. All right, so that's it for the actual debug button parent. We can now go ahead and with O button generic, actually, you know what? 
room game over. I just want you guys to put in one object there. And this is our restart button. So basically if we lose an encounter, we're going to move into this room. And in this room, we just have a single button and the button itself, we will give it a label. We'll call it debug game over. And the main function, we haven't got this function yet, but basically we're, our function will be debug uh, restart, right? So this is the name of the function that we will call when we click this button in this room. If we go over to our code and if we scroll all the way, was it in helper that I wrote it? I've forgotten. Let me go over to scripts and let me go to, actually, where is it? Defend button, skill menu, debug win. Okay, so here we go. We are going to write a new function now. Just like with our game over screen, that's our main function. Okay, so just keep that in mind, guys. Then with that, it's going to take no parameters. So don't worry about that, open and close. And basically all that it's going to do is we will type in game underscore restart. That's all it's going to do. So when we click it, it's going to, as the name suggests, it's going to restart the entire game. So we'll go ahead and save that out. Now, we aren't quite done yet. So what we need to do is we need to be able to actually go into this room. And we also need to add in an extra debug button for our um, combat room itself. So just close that out for now. Head over to the C manager. And in the step event, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And remember in the last video, we went to room go to previous. In this case, because we're working with the lose phase, we're gonna get rid of that line there. And here in the lose phase, what we're going to do is we're gonna write room go to, and uh, not underscore, but we are going to use this one here, room go to num. Now you can do a couple of things here. Whoops, wrong symbol. You can either put in a number. So this is, for example, zero, one, or two. But in this case, the, according to the documentation, it's actually quite, uh, it's quite slow to do it that way. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just gonna grab the name. So for us, our game over screen is RM game over. And let's go ahead and do that here. There are other ways that you can store this in memory. So we're not calling um, objects directly from the asset pool. But for now, this is going to be enough for us. We're still not done yet. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. We need one more function, but I'll get to that in just a second. Open up your RM combat room. And we are going to, on the base UI, not like I did before, on the base UI put in a new, not debug click. Uh, we need to put a new O button generic. And with O button generic, with this one, just like what we have up here, all right, we have debug win, debug win. What we're going to do with this one in the same way is we will write debug lose. And of course the function will also be debug lose. Now go ahead and copy that main function. All right, here, we will write our third function, our third debug function, which is function. And then we just paste that in, debug loose. We're going to open and close. It won't take any parameters just like before. And it's basically going to run the same as debug win. So we can go ahead and copy and paste that. But instead of phase win, what we're going to do is we're going to run phase dot lose. All right, so there it is. Hopefully you guys can see all that. But uh, that's basically it, we're finished. Let's play our game and let's check to see what happens when we run it, all right? We can walk into our enemies and there we go. We can see, all right, now it's our turn. If we click debug lose, we end up in our game over screen, right? It says debug game over. And if we click this, it restarts us back at the beginning. So that's it for this video, guys. I'm going to leave it there and I will have a full tutorial coming up this Tuesday. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.